It is six in the morning and today is a pretty big day for Darren and Cassandra. They basically decided to go through with the termination of their pregnancy and this is a really, 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 really big step for, for the two of them. Not only for Cassandra because she wanted this child so much, but also for Darren because let's not forget it is still a child we're talking about and Darren has a lot of sympathy he totally understands how Cassandra can feel at the moment and he's able to you know be able to relate um, to her to a certain extent I mean he's not carrying the child but it's still his child and he's still deciding to not bring it into the world the thing that the both of them have decided to do you know it's not uh, a spur of the moment thought it is a well <laughs> a well thought through a very well made decision i wanted to say a very thought through decision and you know, darren told her to to take all the time that she needs and if she needs you know a few days to think about it so be it he's not going to be mad at her and we can still kind of um we can still kind of let's we have, no Oh, he's gonna go there. Okay, that's fine. We have multiple bathrooms to choose from there and don't be picky. Um, he, you know, if she wanted to take some more time, that was totally fine. It's her body. It's still a hard decision even for Darren, but he's not carrying the child. He doesn't have to go through with the procedure. So he's being very, um, you know, very, very thoughtful in that process. Not only thinking about himself and being happy that in a way he's getting what he wants and that Cassandra's willing to make this sacrifice for him, but, you know, he, he wants to he just wants to do the right thing and he doesn't really feel like you know pushing her to do it fast or you know telling her how to do it is rightful and, and you know it's, it's not something he has <laughs> the ability to do and it's not something he should have the ability to do because in the end it is still Cassandra's body now even though this was a very thought through decision the two of them still had a pretty long night and you know, they spend most of their time just talking about the baby and, you know, just kind of reminiscing over, um, you know, the, the baby time that Darren had with um, Dirk, I think his name is. And obviously Cassandra kind of butt in with her, you know, her her own stories about what's going to happen, um, not what's going to happen, but her uh, her own stories about her own children, so I wanted to say. And they spent a good few hours talking about it, and uh, Cassandra just kind of said, look, I just want to get it over with, I just want to get it done with. Um, and she's currently making some food on her way out before she goes into work. I don't think she's ever really been late, but this has such a big impact on her and on Darren's life. Darren's like, we don't, I don't want this music. I don't want to listen to anything. <laughs> so Cassandra got herself into some comfy clothes this morning and something really easy, you know, to make it um, a bit more comfortable. And um, today after work, they're going to go and get the procedure done. And they schedule it at a time where if Cassandra is done working or Darren is done working or one has to come home a little earlier, they're going to meet up and go to the clinic and then get it done. Because um, Cassandra, no way she's going to lose her job for this. Like she, she, she's, she, she wouldn't. So I I think that and maybe in this moment she would talk about uh, maybe maybe just some child related things I think that would be very fitting unfortunately you can't directly talk about babies but um, let's do babies and health I think that would be just a, a, a nice in between as they're sitting here kind of laughing and making jokes about this life that never can be and not in an insensitive way but more like oh i wonder what kind of you know features it would have had maybe your big nose like oh no definitely your big butt so, something like that i think that cassandra would probably hurry like, very slowly just suck this uh, cereal in so she's not late and uh, darren would probably do the same i think he works a little later actually yeah he doesn't he doesn't work quite yet but as Isabella comes home Cassandra's leaving, which is perfect because she really doesn't want her mother to know. Dina already blabbed to Mortimer what was going on and that, you know, Mortimer knew so she felt comfortable talking to Mortimer about it. So in a way, she should be thanking Dina because thanks to Dina's big mouth, she had less trouble thinking about how to bring it to Mortimer because she kind of felt like he already knew. But then she's also worried that she's going to tell Bella and you know Bella is just I don't know she just doesn't trust Bella and she just doesn't want this sensitive information to um I don't know come in her path so to say so we're gonna have him take a shower and then I think I want him to take a nap we do have a nice couch for that so 
I mean, I could have him go to bed, actually. Should I have him go to bed afterwards? Yeah, let's have him go to bed. He had had, a, oh, never mind. No, no sleep for you, sir. No sleep for the wicked. So incredibly proud of his wife for, well, his future his wife to be for making this decision. And he cannot imagine how his life would have been if he had this child that he didn't want. And that she's been, she, she's willing to make this sacrifice is also making him doubt himself a little bit. See, he doesn't feel comfortable, right? And it was one of the things, we really need to get a coffee maker, by the way, we really do, but it's one of these things that I said that, he, you know, he, he doesn't feel comfortable in this household and he feels like it's too big and he's not used to this rich lifestyle and he didn't want to bring it up to Cassandra after, you know, everything that she's going to be doing today and, you know, the whole, the whole story, but he still is, is struggling with this. You know, with, with, with the thought of that, with, you know, with the whole idea of living here. And he told himself that, you know, if Cassandra can do this for him and for their relationship, then the least he can do is try really hard to fit in. So he's going to do his best to fit in and to just see it as an opportunity to grow and to do everything he ever wanted, like write and paint. And perhaps he could just, you know, just paint to his heart's content like i don't know whatever he wants to do but he's he's gonna have to see it as an opportunity and um he's, he's gonna try and and perceive it as that and hopefully he can get used to his lifestyle a little better but um for now it's just gonna have to oh my god poor darren going oh for darren for darren and also this cow plant is definitely bugged i can't do anything with it we do have it but we can't use it for anything which is kind of upsetting because i really wanted to kill some people but i think i have to like put him in inventory it's not dead yet i don't think so it's just quite bugged but i actually like quite like it mm. however he's on another path this morning she overheard bella talking to cassandra about the well she just cannot help herself she just you know she she has to she has to keep prying and um you know, she's very observant. That's what she learned in this household. Don't say much, but just be very, very, very observant. And don't you dare eat this. Oh my god, this is disgusting. Actually, I think she fancies like a bag of chips this morning. I know it's like one, but she's like, nah, I don't feel like cooking anything. She's very insecure. And she's considering maybe getting some procedures done, like plastic surgery or something, just to make herself more desirable. She's really feeling like she is battling fighting a battle that she cannot win a war that she cannot win and you know it may sound ridiculous because she is married to mortimer but in a way it makes sense like look at bella's presence look how she carries herself she is intimidated by bella and worried that she's gonna lose oh god you are so classy dina and like i said one of the things that she's truly worried about is not being able to be the better woman and she can argue with bella she can fight bella but what if Morty takes her side, right? That would be horrible. I know that thought. While reading through some of her team's reports, Cassandra realizes that one of her researchers has inadvertently stumbled upon a new lithium isotope. Not only does the discovery of a major find in and of itself, but the practical applications of the isotope in devices such as an atomic linear accelerator and staplers will be worth a fortune. So it is that Cassandra finds herself with a bit of a conundrum. Ethics would obviously say that she should inform the researchers of his own discovery and advise them how to proceed, but practicality says no one ever got a hand in the world of science by sticking to the rules, and Cassandra could easily claim the discovery itself without anyone being the wiser. Nope, she's gonna inform, she's not a stealer. And by the end, Cassandra has a check in her hands for, Ew, oh damn, yeah, oh Cassandra, get it girl. She calls the young researcher and isn't sure what to do, but Cassandra directs him. I I've discovered a new isotope. It's a good one. Woo! Cassandra smiles and the researcher thanks her profusely, saying he could have never done it without her. Oh, oh, that's nice. I feel like she's the type of sim. Look, she's super, she's so pretty, but I feel like she's the type of sim that would definitely get plastic surgery or things done to herself because she's very insecure. And despite that she's been with a lot of men, she's never really had, um, never really had a normal relationship. And she's always just dated men regardless of what they look like, just for their money and for their age. And I think it's that that makes her insecure because in a way she has no idea if people treat her the same way that she treats these men. And then she just starts thinking, well, what if they treat her? But they treat her exactly like that. And that kind of freaks her out as well because, well, what if they do? What if they, what if they really do? And Mortimer is just there because he liked her looks. But if Bella looks better, he's just gonna 
put her aside. And though I don't think Mortimer would ever do that, I definitely think Mortimer loves her. He's a real threat and Dina feels really threatened and she starts having these, these ideas. So just to be on the saver side, she's gonna go ahead and muffle some money, money away. So I'm gonna pause her for just a second. So Bella, no, no Bella, I'm sorry, too many Sims. <laughs> it keeps happening. She has her own bank account. Let me check her money. So she has currently 170,000 in her bank account. And this is kind of like her trust fund almost. Um, just in case something happens, Bella steals Mortimer. Mortimer dies without leaving her any money. She's learned from her past mistakes. So now she just transfers the money to her bank account. And it's like a secret bank account, not something public, you know, not like bank accounts are public anyway, but you know what I mean. I'm actually going to go and deposit money. Now, she feels really threatened by what's happened. So I actually think that she would try and muffle away a big, a big number, a big number, right? Because imagine this. Now she can blame it on Bella. If money disappears, she can blame it on Bella. And in a way, she's loving the thought of this. She's never dared to put away a lot of money, but now that Bella is here and Bella's asking about the money, hmm, she's feeling a little daring. So I'm gonna go and put a hundred K in our inventory and I'm not even, well, you know, our bank. And let's just hope that all goes well for Dina. This is, this is what she has to do. So now she has almost 300,000 in her bank account and that's enough for a big house but definitely not enough for all of her dreams she wants a million she wants the money you know and just as she gets done oh mortimer wants to come over and kiss her and um she's just quickly going out of the room this is actually alexander's room but alexander is currently off to college he's the only one with a computer by the way but you know we already knew this um because he's always been kind of like into technology no but nothing no no other room has this technology by the way I think you guys could already notice that. Mortimer has called her downstairs and Dina willingly comes and um, they silently enjoy a dance together. It kind of reminds her of one of the first dates that she went on with Mortimer, which just makes her really, really happy that that Darren is here to interrupt this moment. Darren, the minutes are quickly counting down to one of the most intense capture the flag matches of Darren's gaming career. His red team is playing a really solid game, but there's still one flag down from beating the blues. Darren has only one more spawn before time will be up, so he must pick the right class and pick it fast. Should he play as a rocket lunchito and blast his way to the flag, or as a recon... Reconnoiter? What? I don't... I have no idea how you pronounce this word. Reconnoiter? Reconnoiter? Maybe I don't know, and runs past everyone to capture the flag. I think he's gonna raw. He's gonna launch it. I think he would do that. It'll be fun. Um, they're so see. You can still learn new words after so many years. Okay, Darren gets the flag and wins the match. His flying skills have earned him a promotion. Oh, that's great. Oh, brute force always trumps finesse. Oh, damn right. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad I interrupted this cute little moment with the two of them. See, when I see them like this, I, I almost believe that they really love each other. And that this is genuinely... Oh my god, Jared, 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 Jared has been promoted. I think that Dina would probably give him a few hugs and maybe, maybe insecurely talk about Bella a little bit. Ask her, hey, what do you think of Bella's return? She seems nice. I don't really know her, but, um, you know... Um, is there anything special going on between you guys? Are you, like, seeing each other? Um, like, she's the mother of Cassandra. I don't know why she's bringing up Cassandra. It's like, hold on, hold on, uh, woman. Hold on, sweetheart. I need to take this phone. It's like, Bella's not here, you bitch. It's like, well, you know I love you, right? Like, I... Like, you mean the world to me. It's like... Hold that thought, sweetie. The phone is ringing again. It's like, can you girls stop calling? How did you even get my number? Hi, sweetie. I'm back. You know you mean the world to me, Dina. I love you so much. And that just makes her feel so comfortable and so, so reassured. She's like, I do. I do know this, but I don't know. I'm just, maybe Bella still loves you. And I don't know. I thought maybe, you know, like, it's, it's, it's a bit of vague description, but it's not necessarily... Um, realistic 
to think that and to say these things. But Mortimer is reassuring that he has no intentions of, you know, replacing Dina. But it, it, not in a direct way, but it's just the subtle, the subtleties of, of what he says, that he likes her, that he has no intentions, you know, stuff like that. And it really is reassuring Dina. So for now, she, um, that and the money, for now, she feels reassured. So that's great. Everyone is at the table and Darren and Cassandra are bringing everyone the good news. They both recently got a promotion and Darren actually got two. He's absolutely ecstatic about this news and he wants to share it with everyone and Cassandra follows him and says, I got a promotion too. We're doing so well. I'm so proud of us. And um, I think now that we saved up a bit of our money, because I like to imagine that Cassandra doesn't mooch off her dad. She has like her own separate bank account within the family funds. And she was saving up for like a nice wedding as well and maybe a nice gift to give to Darren and um, Darren is just working because he's working and he wants to give his son, you know, maybe a head start at life. I don't know exactly. Maybe he's maybe he probably has something he's saving for. And oh my God, Ballad has to bring up the money again. So how much do you make now? And Darren just kind of looks look at the face. Darren just looks at her confused and says, um, why is that interesting? And Ballad keeps saying, yeah, you got to keep the ball rolling, right? And uh, Cassandra kind of looks at her and says, no, we don't need to keep the ball rolling, okay? mother I don't know it looks like Bella is talking about achievements and whatever she says is making Darren really uncomfortable look at Darren's face he's just like hmm but he's like yeah I've got the right connection so if you need some help and Bella um kind of looks at Cassandra as Cassandra looks at Darren and kind of gives him a wink and says I, I think I have the right connection thank you I don't really need help from you where is Mortimer anyway why is he not sitting and join us all eat our our pie okay you know, you need to sit here because that's where the pie is. And you don't even get anything, Bella. Bella's just sitting here. How about we get you a plate as well? I like how Mortimer didn't even give her a plate. He just... <laughs> he, he just forgot she was there. And then he forgot to give her a plate because he's used to only being like four people in the house. And um, Bella is just kind of like... Um, She's like, hmm, um, okay, is this Aunt Morty, huh? Um, you used to love me so much. Oh, now she's sitting next to Cassandra. And Darren remains looking awkwardly to the side as if he's listening to me and not to the, the party and the story. So I think Cassandra would change the topic to perhaps work. And let's see if Bella brings up the freaking money again. Cassandra and Dina are really getting along and I definitely think it's because she feels a little bit threatened by Bella and Cassandra feels just really uncomfortable about Bella being back and though he can tell that they're you know they have the same genes and and you know Bella looks good and it, that has nothing to do with anything I just wanted to say it but it, it still it still doesn't I don't know it just doesn't change the fact that Bella is just being really untrustworthy I know there's something suspicious about her return and everything um, but yeah, we'll never really know and at least Alexander isn't here because I feel like he might be more sensitive to the whole subject, you know, see it from a different perspective, but he's in college right now, so. And look at these boobs on Bella, oh my god. They're also celebrating the life of their child that they, um, you know, they just start the life that they terminated, but it wasn't like a big life, you know, it, it, it was still an embryo, it wasn't you know, it wasn't big, alive with limbs flopping around. It was just like a little cell. It was only like a few weeks uh, of pregnancy and uh, it didn't make it any less bad, but it made it a little easier. And Bella just kind of said to herself, not Bella, oh my God, because Cassandra said to herself, why should I wait to get rid of it? I can just do it now, get it over with. And it's only going to be harder the longer we wait because it's going to be more and more like more and more like um, like an actual baby, an actual fetus and, and child. But yeah, Darren just gained weight from that pie, so that's great. He's like, oh, I'm gonna just dance it off, shake off the sugar. He's got too much, too much of that. And Bella should be going to work, actually. But um, yeah, this was a very fun little episode. And I'm really interested to see what's gonna happen between Dina, Dina, Cassandra, Bella, Darren, and Mortimer. And I think the next episode, I'm gonna go over to Alexander, who is at college and then I might do another part with Brandy because I haven't seen Brandy in a while but yeah I'm, I'm definitely thinking of uh, continuing this soon and it'll be fun for Dina to have a little party as well I think that um, Dina would love to maybe invite some of her friends I think that'll be super that'll be nice. Oh, 
asserting your dominance, Dina. I see you there. Either way, I'm going to end this part here. I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye!